But I just unbolted this. We're getting ready to look at the belt and how bad it is. Um, for some back reference, I have not well, changed this belt since it got off the boat of uh, Japan. So we're gonna all take a look at it together and see just how bad it was. <laughs> Yeah, now we're recording. Now we're recording? All right. So we just missed Jeremy dropping wrenches into his engine bay. It's fine. Oh, yeah, there's no engine in there. I think I found your problem. <laughs> they don't know. Wait, do I need to do another one where I lay down down the trans tunnel? I'm going to put the hood back on it, and so this way we open the hood and get you underneath. I'll be. I realize that we actually lost power. I'll be your gerbil under, in your, uh, in your no. engine bay. <laughs> no, that's my name. We'll do this intro in just a second. Cha! Bah! No, push the jack underneath the car. Push. Instructions unclear, dick stuck in toaster. Here's your seat mounts. Oh, thank you. So we're we're about to go make a drink run in Sid. But you can't make it sound like Dude, are we are we breaking that out now? Oh yeah, so okay, so here's what happened, right? So as you can see, Janice car is on jack stands getting work done. But, uh, so her four-wheel drive solenoid went out in this, so it was four-wheel drive all the time. And so, me doing this job, Janet was like, your birthday's coming up, you can have Sid, which I'm sure you guys know who Sid is. Piece of shit demon child out there that uh, is currently running. We did the brakes, we did tie rods, inner, outer, and we took all of the interior out. So. Right now it only has a driver's seat, so I went ahead and threw a couple cushions in there. We're gonna go to the store and get some drinks. And uh, then we're gonna come back and make an actual video about, um, well, I, I promised I'd do an un unboxing video. So we have to do at least one unboxing video. Um, and then I'll explain to you what's going on with this and why it's out of the, yeah. show you the lope <laughs> of this rotary. Not really. It, it just runs a little, little high. Yeah. Oh, wait. It's that high horsepower build. Sometimes they gotta idle high. It's all right. The two-step though. All that two-step. No, no hard off the line. Take this up now. Five thousand RPM. Good enough. Eight thousand RPM. Right. No. <laughs> I don't think this the valves would allow it to go to five thousand RPM. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Okay, so now back to this video, now that we're done making that video. Um, if you're curious about the video that we're talking about, it was the one that was posted directly before this one, probably three days ago. So now that you're watching this one, we're gonna actually talk about what we're doing here, because you guys know about it now. And if you don't know about it, go watch the video that we posted three days ago. Yeah, it's like 12 minutes. It was all one take. And it's all about everything that we're doing, everything that's happened, Everything. It was an update video. It was necessary. It was essential, just like we are. Uh, okay, so now that you guys know that we have a new intake manifold, we have a new uh, turbo, we have a new exhaust manifold, um, we have a new ECU, we have a new time belt water pump, we have oil lines we gotta run. We have a lot of stuff we have to do in a short amount of time. So let's get started, okay? First we're gonna we're gonna route everything here. First thing we did, we made sure the turbo was clocked the way we want it. We have oil feed here, oil drain in the bottom. Uh, we have 
coolant going in one of these sides. Um, but as far as oil feed, oil drain, oil or coolant drain, okay, so how this is gonna look is right here is our oil drain. We're gonna run basically a dash 10 AN line directly up here into a dash 10 AN line. And this is all gonna be heat shielded, so it's not gonna be just an exposed AN line. Um, I should probably click on this so you guys, oh yeah, you guys can see, dope. Okay, so yeah. Dash 10 AN line fitting is gonna be here. It's gonna run down and then directly into here. But since we moved the turbo, this is now too short, which is dope because this came in contact with our um, old setup. So this is gonna work out quite well. Our oil feed is right here. Uh, so yeah, oil feed, oil drain. That's a lie, god damn it. So <laughs> Coolant feed. So this is coolant feed. Um, right back here, it's dark. You guys probably can't see it, but there's a little ring. This is our oil feed. Our oil feed is gonna come up through here, up in between here, and then banjo bolt right here. All that's gonna be heat sleeved. Our turbo drain's gonna come here to go here. Our oil feed is gonna come from right here, and our oil drain is gonna go here all the way around the back of the engine and connect into this hose right here, which is gonna be connected to something. Don't know yet, but I'll figure that out. Let's get everything else routed first. So I keep forgetting we're still doing a video for the second half of this, other than just update. Uh, more or less, we've got... Okay, we've got some lines in. It's loud as hell in here because we got our heater running. It's 62 degrees in here. <laughs> That's pretty chilly. We got to make sure uh, Princess over here is in good shape. <laughs> um, so, so far we've gotten oil intake to um, oil intake to turbo. That's routed. That's figured out. Coming around, um, and then we've got our two coolant lines figured out. Inlet and outlet. Um, and then you're not even looking. I'm pointing down here and pointing the camera up there. So, got coolant lines figured out. We got intake or in in line turbo figured out. Coil, oil. My mind's a mess. However, we ran into a little bit of an issue trying to get our oil drain figured out because originally he had that uh, 45 right here because we needed to clear our steering rack. And now we don't necessarily have those same parts, so we've got to do some working around. Basically, what we came down to now is we're about to put the engine back into the engine bay for some mock-up reasons, make sure everything's clearing where it needs to, because this is the new plan, I think. Okay, so this is the old, right? Hmm. Um, and the old plan is, this is a dash eight or dash 10 line that runs from the turbo drain to the, um, to this thing here, <laughs> <laughs> to the drain port that goes into the block. So since this is a dash 10, I purchased a head drain, which will keep the head from, or the oil from filling up in the head and depleting the sump. And so it'll drain from the head down into our turbo drain line. Now the problem with that is this needs to sit right about, what is it? Right about here. So this way it can go in between the wastegate and the exhaust manifold and be kosher and good. But the problem is this hits on our U-joint of the steering shaft. So since it hits on the U-joint, we need to figure out how to get this to clear. Whether it's just a matter of moving it a little bit, which this way we might be able to run it through here and then heat sheet, heat shield it. Um, but I much more like the idea of running it here and running it through right here and then up to here. And so it's just a matter of what fits where. Ultimately, I wanted to do a 90 coming straight out of here, but that's just not in the cards anymore. So this is what we're looking at. But will it fit? That's the question. So we got to figure that out. Yeah. So quick update. <laughs> Engine's going back in the car for a moment. 
Um, not going to be mocked up or not going to be hooked up really just more mocked up so that we can get fitment figured out but i wanted to uh bring another update in of hey we have some lines figured out now granted so coolants are right mostly in the spot there this one back here is going to be trimmed down to over here somewhere and then that line's going to be nice and tight like that and we are we're going to be maintaining the factory um uh, what do you call those adapters that this used to go to the back of the head um this used to go to our oil cooler um well as a heat exchanger and since we're putting a relocation bracket on here we don't have any of this stuff anymore so i'm going to try and neck these down a little bit to go into our idle air control sensor which sits at the bottom of our intake which is really cool that adapts that to the uh uh, Otako Garage intake manifold. Uh, okay, we're going to take this and put it in here now. So we got the engine back in and on the motor mounts and where they belong. Um, what we have found is the same issue that I ran with in prior times, which I don't know how well I documented. So that U-joint right there for the steering shaft um, kind of comes close to the oil drain for the turbo, whether it's in stock or turbo or not. It's always been a problem for me. So where I have it clocked right now, it might be perfect. We just have everything slightly tightened down. So this way, the oil head, shit, you guys still can't see. Shit. Maybe, maybe this will work. Okay, so the oil drain will come directly through here and I'll just heat shield, um, put a thousand degree heat uh, blanket on it. So it'll run from here to here, through here, and into the adapter there, which should, in theory, make it clear the, that U-joint. Hopefully this works. If not, I'm wasting a lot of time and going to be pulling this engine in and out and in and out and in and out. But that'll probably happen. It's like the last So now that you can see it a little bit better and it's out of the engine, what we got going on right here, uh, let me get a, okay. So we have to come at about a 45 degree off the 45 degree, which will connect to an AN fitting or AN line that'll go straight up into right there. And uh, then on this side, this A in line will come straight in through these pipes here. Yeah, that's gonna be hot, but it's kind of our only option, really. Um, and then that will attach to a head drain, which will go through this port, which I'll show you guys installing that. Uh, I will also, when I post that video, I'll post a couple links to videos showing the rear head drain install. But for now, we're gonna put this back on the engine stand. I'm gonna tighten all this stuff down and get it more in a permanent position. All right, so we are just about finished up. I um, put some 
Teflon tape on all of the points of compression seal. So, what? Well, okay, so these are A in line. So I know you don't put Teflon on these. This is a um, MPT thread. So is this one here. So both of those got Teflon tape, but everything else is tightened down, ready for uh, piping to be made. But I need to order one of those, and I need to go get the head drain. So that's where we're at. But I just unbolted this. We're getting ready to look at the belt and how bad it is. Um, for some back reference, I have not will change this belt since it got off the boat of uh, Japan. So we're gonna all take a look at it together and see just how bad it was. Um, I know the clutch when we got the car, well, the clutch was cooked like cracked flywheel, and there was gouges in the flywheel from the rivets of the clutch, the uh, friction material. So let's uh. All together, take a look. Oh, that's not that bad. Ooh. Oh no, that's bad. That was getting ready to let go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some light on this thing. Oh man. Here, I got you. Oh my God, it's so cracked. Oh, my light's on. <laughs> Dude. You can oh, fucking push the crack to focus. I mean, you guys can see it's crunchy looking. Holy shit. Unfortunately, it's not gonna focus for you guys, but yeah, that all every single one of those crunches is a crack. She she crunchy. All right, I'm gonna get the rest of this thing taken apart, and uh, yeah, we're gonna take this belt off. All right, so day one of oh, I guess it was <laughs> routing turbo lines, and day one of replacing the timing belt complete by the way you need a freaking uh, uh pulley puller pulley puller <laughs> pulley puller to pull off your pulley here and definitely not uh right yeah our snort. <laughs> <laughs> we tried we gave it a valiant effort i don't know what you're talking about we tried nothing I'm here i think i can get in here i'm gonna try i'm here hi um <laughs> so <laughs> I ain't getting a haircut. Yeah, I'll trim my sides. That's about it. I ain't doing that shit again. Yeah. No, I can, I'm gonna pick. Yeah. All right. All right. So yeah, we finished with day one. Um, RV refresh. Thank you for the title. So, RV refresh part one. Yes. AKA 450 horsepower prep. <laughs> day <laughs> prep for you. Yeah, it's day one of recording. <laughs> we don't talk about that. The fact that I haven't been recording is completely pointless. So probably what's going to happen now is I'm going to send everybody home. Nate's going to go home. I'm going to play video games. We ain't going to stream it. Because we don't like you. We love you. Yeah, so that's the other thing. Jump on to... What are we streaming on? I don't know right now. <laughs> Well, I think I'm practicing streaming right now. So I'm practicing streaming, so don't come watch. It's pretty bad. Yeah. I'm playing Tarkov, Star Citizen, Call of Duty. Ditching me and Ryan to play Tarkov when he told us he'd join into our party. When? Two days ago. What? You told Ryan you're going to jump into the party with us, and you never did. Oh, no, 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 no. I ended up watching the movie with Janet, and then... Uh, yeah, you're going to jump, was... jump in off to the movie, or is what you told him anyway. I was going to, and then I fell asleep during the movie. Ah. And then I woke up, and then Brad... Why am I recording this? Okay, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> this video is over. Goodbye. Goodbye. As always, stay, stay sideways. sideways.